what's up, it's uh, Wick for Wikimedia Tutorials, and uh, today I'm going to take a look at filters. I've already got my Cubase project open up, and I've imported its uh, first audio track right here. And I'm going to browse through my inserts, and I'm going to look for two different types of filters today. I'm going to look at the tonic filter, which is a standard filter which comes with Cubase. And I'm going to take a look at the Moog filter, which is a UAD-powered plugin by Universal Audio. So these are the two that I'm going to take a look at. At first, they look completely different. And as you will later see, is that there's a lot of similarities, because they're both filters. I'm first going to take a look at the tonic. I'm going to disable the Moog filter so that it doesn't work while I'm just working with this tonic filter. So I'm going to bring that up into the middle. And I'm going to take a look at all the different controls that this one has. One of the first things you'll probably notice is that this filter has been divided into various sections. The middle section, which is a filter section, is the thing that we're going to be focusing on for the main part. On the left we've got an envelope, on the right we've got a low frequency oscillator, and here on the left bottom we have this XY pad which we can use to manipulate two parameters of the filter with not something that you will commonly find on all filters so um, I'm gonna focus on the middle part which is really the filter part right here um, if I'm gonna go on top here you can see the different types or filter modes as they call it here that we can choose from and if I click on it I get this drop down list of filters which go from four different types of low pass filter that's the LP24 up to the LP6 the 24 or the 6 stands for the DB per octave cut so the 24 DB per octave cut will well, remove frequencies a lot faster and a lot more than when we have a curve of 6 dB per octave cut. And then we've got this band pass and we've got a high pass filter. So for today I'm going to just take a look mainly at the low pass and the high pass filters. I'm going to start with the low pass. And then we see one of the few controls that we will see a lot. In the middle right here we've got the cutoff frequency. This is the frequency from where the filter actually starts working. So we've got this dialog box here on the left which is really helpful indicating at which frequency that we exactly are. So now we can see we're around 1 kilohertz going on the way uh, 2 kilohertz etc etc. On the left we've got our resonance and this resonance gives a little bit of a boost around this cutoff frequency. Then we've got a drive, which is something we will not commonly find on all filters. But this basically acts like a little bit of a distortion or a saturation. And that's something you don't always want. So I'm going to turn that all the way down to zero for now. Here in the bottom, we've got a mix. This blends the left 0% indicating our dry signal or our unfiltered signal, the way that it enters this plugin. And at the end, 100%, we have our full filtered signal. So everything in between will be a blend of our dry and our wet signal. So I'm going to put that all the way in 100% so we just have our filtered signal for now. Then when here in the middle we've got this switch so we can actually make our stereo signal mono if we want to. I'm going to play you back the theme song which I've already got loaded up and I'm going to play around with the cutoff frequency so you can hear the effect. If I move that down you can hear I'm removing more of the high frequencies. That's why it's called a low pass. If I'm going to play around with the resonance and increase that, you will hear that it's giving a boost around the edge where the cutoff frequency is. So this will give a lot more effect when we give a filter sweep like so. Occasionally it gets too sharp when we get into the higher frequency range. So what you would probably do with automating is that we would automate the cutoff with the resonance. So what we would do is that we would increase the resonance when we're in the lower frequencies because it gives a nice bump to that low end. But we decrease that resonance and make it a little bit lower when we get to these higher frequencies so they're not that sharp. So when we're around here we want this resonance to be automated a little bit softer as well. So as you can hear, the filter, the low pass filter is something that you can uh, easily use in a, in a production and you hear that all the time. I'm going to compare that with a high pass filter where we just remove the low frequencies and keep the high content. Now the cutoff works basically the other way around because you can hear we just have the high content now. If 
So I put that back. I can play around with the mix. I actually have a mix between our original input signal and the filtered signal. So we still get that effect of the filter, but it's not on the whole complete signal, so we still have some of that original content. And this is the basic of how we can filter some of the low end or of the high end of our signal. So now I'm going to take a look at the MOOC filter. I'm going to open that up. And as you can see, again, this MOOC filter has also been divided into these sections. On the left we've got our input. Then we uh, can actually apply this drive, which is, again, a little bit of a saturation, so I'm going to turn that off. Then we've got our filter section here. On the right, we've got our low frequency oscillator and our output, again, with a mix. So we can uh, mix between our input signal and our filtered signal. Again, a mono stereo switch, and this actually offers also an output boost, so we can uh, boost our output signal even more. So I'm going to take a look at the filter section for now, starting off with the cutoff frequency, again the frequency where we start filtering from, then we've got the resonance here, and these different types of filter modes uses the symbols. So on the left we've got our low pass filter, then we've got our band pass filter, and we've got our high pass filter. So again I'm going to start with the low pass filter, and I'm going to scrub with the cutoff frequency to hear the filter effect. You can hear this filter sounds different than the previous one. Increase that resonance. And that gives it too sharp edge when, uh, when we're back at the, at the full signal. So that's something that you want to automate for sure. We can uh, switch between the two pole and the four pole. The two pole and the four pole are the curve of, uh, of filtering that are being uh, being applied. So we can hear that. I'm gonna put it around 200 hertz. Two pole, four pole. It's hard to hear when you're not uh, listening this on headphones or on, uh, on good speakers. So I'm going to turn it a little bit higher on uh, around 1000 hertz. Two pole. So you can hear that it filters a lot more on the four pole. We can choose between the low pass and the band pass filter. interesting effect and we're going to use the high pass filter as well pass everything increase that resonance so we get more of the effect spacing option here on the on the bottom actually allows us to filter just one side of our stereo image when we're working with a stereo signal. So now I'm going to take a look at this low frequency oscillator or this LFO here on the right and I've imported a different sound from the Prime Loops Dubstep Arena which is just a bass sound. I'm going to turn off the filter for now so we can hear that. So it's just one tone sound and what I want to do is I want to play around with the cutoff frequency. I've got a low pass filter set up and I want to play around with that because you can hear if I play around with it I get some interesting effects but unfortunately I'm not fast enough with my mouse to create that interesting effect well that's where the LFO comes in the LFO is basically like an automation for this cutoff frequency and it uses a frequency to manipulate that movement which I just tried to make with my mouse so how that works is it's really an oscillator which generates a frequency. It generates a sine wave. I'm going to draw that down here so you can kind of visualize what this does. So here on the left I'm going to draw this LFO and I'm going to draw it before the filter because that's how we should visualize it actually. 
So I've got my LFO, which generates a frequency. So how can we set that frequency? We set the frequency with the rate, and that's actually the frequency that it generates. So if we set it on one, it means that it will generate a frequency of one hertz. So that is one oscillation per second. We can even go below that. So we have a frequency that is lower than one hertz. So we have a 0 0.2. 34 hertz and we can go faster and we have a faster rate you can see this uh, blinking LFO lighting up here so that means the speed of the LFO is indicated with that light so if you go slower you can see this is the speed at which it's opening and closing the type of wave that it's using is something that we can set here so we can set this to be a more of a sawtooth type of wave so now it's a different type of wave manipulating this cutoff frequency so it would go more like z and then close automatically and then open and go back and open so that's a different type of wave so if we're going to just use this sine wave it will be more of a continuous opening and closing type of maneuver so i'm going to just choose this one and i'm going to choose the amount because the amount is the uh, amount how much influence this actually has on our cutoff so i'm going to turn that all the way up so we can hear the full effect and i'm going to turn that rate up a little bit more so we can hear it as well so if i'm going to play it back now you can hear i get like a swooshy uh, well like a helicopter type of sound so if i increase that rate and play it back again that's already getting a quite interesting effect. I can even go up to higher frequencies. And I could still play around with all the other settings as well. I'm going to play it in a loop so you can uh, hear me play around with the different settings. So I'm going to turn it on loop. resonance even more playing around with the cutoff I'll keep that on the lowest So you can hear you can do some really interesting effects by using an LFO. So now we're just using a frequency. If we switch this button right here from free to sync, we can actually use musical values. So now instead of being the, the, the hertz, we're actually seeing musical values. So here we have, uh, let's look for a 16th note. I can browse through and here we had it this is a 16th note and i can actually see the speed of which my project is running and that is at 140 beats per minute so now it's taking the 16th note of 140 beats per minute so this could be interesting for musical type of effects Let me just quickly import a different sound and uh, let's try it with that. So now I've imported this different uh, sound, which is another uh, bass line sound from Prime Loops. If I uh, play that, it's a distorted type of uh, saturated sound. Something like that. So I'm uh, going to turn back on the uh, Moog filter and I'm going to play around with the LFO settings. So uh, I'm going to make sure the amount is going to be set to 100 again. And I've got my project running at 140 beats per minute. So that's corresponding to my values right now. So it's set to musical values. It's set in a loop. So I'm going to play around with that. So that was with the high pass. And I'm going to do the same with the low pass. And I can change the curve of the wave. You can hear that sounds different. 
So especially when we're uh, doing these type of dubstep sounds, this is one of the things that we want to automate, the rate. So what I've done now, I've uh, quickly made some automation track on this, uh, on this bass sound and I've imported two drum tracks. And uh, that's just to demonstrate how you can play around with the automation on this filter. What I'm doing here on this automation lane is I'm just adjusting this rate here. So if I would play this back and I'm going to solo just the bass sound from the start here. You can see this curve here represents the rate. And then I've used uh, just the filter on these uh, on these drum tracks to give it a little bit more uh, interesting dynamic. So What I've done on the on the drums here is I just automated the cutoff frequency so it kind of uh, filters in. I'll put that on solo so you can hear it. And then here it actually gives that boost, but here I decrease this resonance so you don't get that sharp edge at the end. If I wouldn't have done that, I can just remove that part here. You can hear how sharp it gets. I'll just remove the whole point and keep it around that point here. So that would get way too sharp. So that's why I remove that resonance here when uh, when we fade in with the filter. So that's uh, that's just what I've done. I've just created some dynamics and some uh, some interesting effect with a filter on this bass and some filtering on the drums. So that's all that I've done. Real quick example so uh, so you get an idea. Um, I'm gonna look at some more filtering quite soon. The next episode is gonna be about equalizers and uh, I'm already working on the next season which is gonna be about mixers, mixing consoles and mixing software in general. So that's gonna be a real interesting subject to talk about as well. So uh, I hope you've learned something today. Um, once again, this was uh, Wick for Wikimedia Tutorials, and uh, I'll see you next time. Peace!